Hey, John here. Let's look at this thing called a shift register. Okay, a shift register is a regular old D latch, as you can see by all these D latches. You got a multi bit D latch, right? Here's a three bit shift register. Okay, now the idea is in the standard case where you just have a D latch and you have all these parallel data lines coming in and parallel data lines going out like we use when we make a, a memory, a static memory, right? Just a whole bunch of D latches, connect all the clocks together, the clock edge arrives, right? And the parallel data comes in the Ds and the parallel data comes out of the Qs, right? Notice I added an extra multiplexer in here. So what we can do with this, as we'll see, is we can bring, we can load these three bits all at once in parallel with these three input bits up here on a leading edge of the clock. Or what we can do is we can change this multiplexer using this signal over here. And when a clock arrives, what will happen is rather than getting the data, for example, this latch down here, rather than getting it from the parallel input pins, instead it's going to get it from the latch over here on its left. Okay? So this signal here will control whether when a clock arrives, this latch loads the data from here, PN0, or if it loads it from the output Q bit of the latch to, the, to its left, all right? You just keep on going as far as you want. You can make these as wide as you want, okay? I'm going to just throw you three. If you want 32, just put a bunch of these together, all right? Now, you got a serial in over here and a serial out over there. So what do you do with these end bits, right? Well, let's look at what would happen if this load shift signal over here, the idea with this is you load in parallel when this is a one, and you shift when this bit is a zero. So that slash there, whenever you see this notation on a chip or a schematic, normally what it means is that if this signal is high, you're doing the function it says over here, loading, the parallel load. If this signal is zero or low, the one underneath, like the denominator in a fraction, it's going to do this operation here, which is marked as shift. Okay, so why do we care about this? Well, this is connected to the the address input of these two input multiplexers here, right? So when this signal's a one, we're loading in parallel. When it's zero, we're shifting. So let's say there's a zero on that. Okay, all these muxes are going to read from their zero input, and you can see a little zero down there and a little one up on top here, right? So this is zero. What happens? I had a clock, leading edge clock, right? The S in signal will propagate through this MUX, leading edge here, this latch will load the bit, whatever the value is on S in over here will be loaded into this latch here. Now, because this is all synchronous, at the exact same time, whatever used to be in this latch will go through this MUX and be loaded into this latch over here, shifting it to the right. That's why they call it shift register, okay? So what happens when I clock it? S in goes to here. Let's call this one, for the lack of anything else, just call it X2, X1, and X0, just so we can refer to these things, right? So the X2 output will have been loaded with S in in that scenario, right? The X1 output will be the value of the old value of X2's output over here, right? And X0's Q output will have been loaded with the old X1 Q output, okay? So the whole thing shifts every time there's a clock here when this signal is a zero. If this signal is a one, clearly you can see the, the one input on these MUXs. Say a single edge here loads every one of these latches at once from the parallel ends. Now, no matter what's in these latches, we can always see what's there by looking at the parallel output signals down here. We can also see these, this one in here is the same as this one over here. X0, whatever the, the, the furthest to the right when you're shifting, uh, when you build a shift register that only shifts one way to the right here, the least significant bit over here, the furthest to the right bit, we'll call the serial output bit, okay? So the idea of these things, what they're normally used for is one of two purposes. Either you just hardwire this thing over here to a zero, 
and you raise the load, put a parallel load in here of all the bits. Then you lower this and you clock this repeatedly. Okay, so what would happen is you'd do one parallel load this way, then you do a shift, 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 shift until it all goes out by way of S out over here. So that's parallel in, shift out. The other thing you can do with this thing is shift in, right? Put a zero on this signal up here and keep it zero all the time, okay? And just clock this repeatedly so that the whatever signal over here is arriving over the course of time just keeps on shifting through these registers and you watch what it is on the parallel bus coming out. Now, presumably there would be other circuitry at a higher level and a system that employs a shift register like, for example, let's say there were eight bits, and were eight latches, eight D latches in here, okay? What you would do is put a zero on here in that scenario. You would clock this eight times, and you don't really care what this is during those eight clocks, right? What you would be doing is clocking in eight bits of data that would stage through all the latches. And after the eighth one arrives, then you would look and see, oh, I just shifted in an eight bit value and look at it in parallel later on, all right? So that's what these things are usually used for. As drawn here, you can use this circuit to either go parallel in, serial out, or you can go serial in and parallel out, or all of the above at the same time, if you really wanted to, if you could find a need for that. So let's look at a timing diagram now, what one of these things really looks like and what it does over the course of time, the time axis being down here. Let's say we have a free running clock. Now, depending on your applications, you might need to start and stop this clock in order to make this thing shift and wait and then go and then stop, whatever you want to do, okay? Depends on your application. In this application, we're going to let this thing free run, and all we're going to show here is what it means to load a parallel input data into the whole latch whose value will be hexadecimal CB, all right, on this leading edge right here. So if load is high, we're doing a parallel load on the next rising clock edge. So this CB on that rising clock edge will cause the eight bits. In this scenario, we have an eight bit shift register, okay? D7 through D0 would be the most significant through least significant bits of this parallel input data. So if I load in a CB, on that rising edge right there, I would have a 1100, that's the C, and I would have 1011, that's the B, okay? And as we showed before, the least significant bit in the registers is just hardwired to the serial output. So S out and data output zero, this is what we would have called X zero in the drawing I just did. The least significant one is just connected to the output, what we call the serial output. Now, the parallel output lines down here are also shown in the timing diagram, right? And that makes sense. If I have an 8-bit D latch and I load all 8 bits at the same time with the value of CB, well, then the parallel out is really the bits from D7 down to D0, which we loaded with a CB, okay? With this signal low and a rising edge on clock, it's going to shift it to the right one bit. Now, I put a yellow highlight on here to track the most significant bit in this CB value that's loaded into the register initially over here, okay? So the idea that when it shifts to the right, what we're doing here is we've got to kind of turn your head. This is going down. So this, this bit, the D7 bit moves into the D6, the D6 moves into the D5, D5 moves into the D4, and so on, okay? So as time passes and this rising edge causes the shift register to shift because the signal's low, D7 becomes down here into D6 and so on, right? So if you look closely, this one comes down here, the zero comes down here, the zero comes down here, the one comes down there, zero down there, one down there, and S out is just a reflection of whatever is on D0 right now. We can also see that the parallel output value changes from CB to 65. 
Why? Because 0110 is a 6 and 0101 is a 5. CB shift right once is 65. Shift it again. Another leading edge right here. Another rising edge, I should say. 65 shifted right one becomes a 32 in hex. Okay? And again, we're shifting zeros in in this scenario. Maybe I should have shown S in up here as always being zero. Sorry about that. But I think we can visualize that okay, right? So what happens, right? So uh, this zero shifts down, one shifts down, one shifts down, zero shifts down. Same thing. And as you can see, over the course of time, it just keeps on shifting, 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 shifting until this most, what used to be over on the far left or the, uh, the top most significant bit is shifted all the way down to the least significant bit and reflected on the S out signal over here. And this leading edge right here then finally shifts in its eighth zero such that all of the latches in the shift register have been set to zero. Now, presumably, you'd eventually rise the load shift signal back up again over here if you wanted to load in another value and then have it shift out. And you just go in this pattern repeatedly over the course of time. I want to shift out a CB, please. Okay, rise it, load in. Let it shift out. Later on, oh, I want to shift out a 1F, please. You know, put that on the parallel input lines and rise up the load shift signal and then give it another uh, leading edge on the clock and shift that one out. Okay? That's really all there is to these things. Thanks for watching. See you next time.